Yeah, so I am, um, as I said to just before, before we were talking, um, I found you by listening to the uh, Confessionals podcast. I think it was it was a while ago, wasn't it? I got in touch with you. I think I think it was like a few a few weeks ago. Was I, I uh, I've been the one one you've been speaking to on on X. Um, and as soon as I listened to the Confessions podcast with you on, I I spoke to the guys. It's like I, I really want to get her on the show because it was such a it was such a crazy story that was put across in such a believable way that it was it was a it was strange because because. Because I'm listening to this thing going, I, I shouldn't be, I shouldn't be believing this as much as I am. Uh, but it, it came across in such a natural way. I just thought, right, well, there's something. I, I'd, uh, if nothing else, I know this lady isn't lying to me when I, when I was listening Appreciate to that. it. Thank you. Um, so I think the best way to start this for uh, our audience, I would implore them to go and listen to the Confessionals podcast that you were on, which I believe their ep- the episode you were on was called Soul Trap. Um, yeah, and the but if you'd like to like briefly sort of summarize like who you are and like sort of what your messages be and your experiences, that'd be great. Well. Um... Who I am. You want personal information? I'm 55 years old, been married for about 26 years. Um, I was in law enforcement for many years. I was an investigator. I worked undercover. I worked at internal affairs um, to summarize that. And um, at the very same time, um, I'm one of those people who's getting snatched out of my bed at night and it's something that's been happening for my entire life um it's something that runs in my family it's generational and to get to your point Lee, about how unbelievable this is um i've just now wrapped my own mind around it uh, mm-hmm. very recently in the last year or so um i had a very very difficult time even believing this for myself um, I came from a very, you know, logical, analytical, investigative background. I started, I came, I went, came on the job when I was 21 years old. So I spent the majority of my adult life um, in, in that type of um, mindset, you know, looking for evidence and being analytical and being logical, et cetera. So I had a very difficult time with this as well. And I appreciate that, um, your audience is apparently even open-minded enough to listen to the story because it can be very unbelievable. It is unbelievable. It's the stuff of science fiction. And it's very difficult to wrap the average everyday normal human mind around these things until you start hearing um, similar stories from so many people. Uh, One thing I learned just in my law enforcement background is you know, something can sound kind of outrageous, but when 10 people are saying it, even though they might have different perspectives, they might have seen things a little bit differently, they might have witnessed, you know, certain details that might not be exactly perfectly aligned with each other. But if they're all saying the same basic thing, there might be something there. And so I would just encourage your audience to listen to me and other people uh, who say similar things, um, just listen with an open mind and kind of just take it in and ask yourself, could this actually be happening? Um, I had to do it myself. I still sometimes stop and look around and go, I cannot, I just can't believe this is happening. Um, so I, I, I fully appreciate that point of view. Um, this has been happening to me since I was a kid, but I didn't put all of those pieces together until I was an adult and actually very recently in the last two or three years. What really stood out to me, um, we've had people on before uh, and I won't go too much into that, but we've had people and some of the stuff that you said in the interview that I listened to on the confessionals, I rang Lee immediately after and I'm like, wow. I said, we've had this before. And I never, I've never thought of it that way for quite some time. We've been thinking, is it demons? Is it is it d- dimensional beings? We keep hearing this. What actually is it? But for somebody who's lived it, what was that realization like when you when it when it just clicked? 
for yourself? Um, it was devastating for me. I had a very, very difficult time of it. I went through a full-blown uh, personal, uh, even spiritual crisis um, when I realized this was happening. Um, when I realized that when my worldview, it just got completely turned upside down. And I had to really wrap my own mind around what was happening to me, what was happening to members of my family. Um, there's no other word to use. It was, it was devastating. I had to kind of start over. I had to start over and ask myself, um, just from my own worldview, am I, you know, believing in things just because they were taught to me, just because I have always thought that they were true and real, or am I believing in certain things because they actually are real? And so I had to really step back from my own, I had to step back from my own religion, um, from how I, I looked at the world and just start over. And I had to ask myself, what is this I'm doing? Because it's so far out there. It's, I mean, it, it's science fiction. You mentioned that this has happened from, from a lot, like from being a child. When is your first memory of this actually happening? And what was that br just briefly? I know you've mentioned this on other shows, but just for our audience, what is your first memory of what happened? I'm sure. So my first just out there memory or, or things that, you know, don't really fit into a normal um, paradigm is I was about three and a half years old. And what has happened is I've kind of gone back and reconstructed a lot of my childhood. I've, I've you know, drawn diagrams. I've spoken to my parents and, you know, other relatives and just trying to figure out you know, where was this, when was this happening? Um, so I was about three and a half years old. I was living outside with a um, naval base in New London, Connecticut. And it was night, I was in my bed. And I woke up uh, frozen and not able to move. And there were two uh, very tall, they were white to grayish uh, entities standing in my doorway. Um, at the time, I had no reference whatsoever or what this was. Um, I didn't feel, I don't remember feeling any fear or anything like that. I had that feeling that they were kind of peeking in at me, kind of investigating or looking at me. And then that was it. And I don't have any memories before that or after that particular incident. So that was the entirety of that incident. I just woke up, I looked, and I thought, what in the world is this? But I'm a kid, you know, don't have any reference for it. And so that was the first memory I have of something, what we would refer to in the UFO community as something anomalous happening. Um, and then, you know, it kind of went on from there. I had a couple of interesting incidents as a child, several, and then it continued into um, my adulthood. And then it wasn't until, if you've heard the story, um, it wasn't until I was a full-blown adult in my 50s that I started putting all of these pieces together, that I mm -hmm. kind of just stopped and I just said, wait a minute, this is maybe not normal, um, and I, and I started putting all these pieces together to kind of get the big picture. And this happened before, um, before I came across, you know, any other people this was happening to. And so it was, it was very difficult for me to stop and say, wait a minute, what is happening to me? This makes no sense. And, and then to come to find out that it's also happening to my mother. It's happening to other members of my family. It's actually happened on both sides of my family, on my mother's side and on my biological father's side. Um, and so it was like putting a, a big puzzle together. And then finally, after that, I've been having to admit myself to myself what was going on. Um, I don't think most people want to get up in front of other people and speak about something that makes them look insane. You know, it's just not definitely not high on my list. Um, I think you might have asked, you know, why I'm here, what is my message? And the message is, this is happening. Mm -hmm. um, it's probably happening to people you know. And people are very, very afraid to talk about it. People um, lose their families and children. They lose jobs over this. You know, they get crazy. People have been committed over this. There's 
a good chance people have been killed over this. Um, so it's not something that very many people really want to talk about, um, especially to strangers. I mean, we can hardly mm-hmm. talk about it with our own families. So to talk about it with strangers is, is a whole other ballgame. Um, I have found myself in a position where I am able to talk about it because I am retired. I don't have a lot to lose. I'm not uh, trying to get custody of any kids. I don't have a job to lose. Um, I just don't have the things hanging over me that are hanging over a lot of people who aren't able to come out and talk. So that's why I'm here, to talk about it, to try to bring it, you know, a little bit more mainstream because the bottom line is, is this is probably coming to the kitchen table at some point in the future. Will it be this year? Will it be five or 10 years from now? I don't know. But it's going to be something that we're all going to be talking about. And one of the most important aspects of it is people like me who are being taken out of their beds. And even during the middle of the day, out of the living room, um, by these creatures uh, that we can't even, I don't want to say we can't begin to understand them because I think I have a pretty good understanding of it. But just to keep in general terms, the general public will have absolutely no frame of reference for what's going on. Yeah, it, it was something I found interesting because um, I, I listened to your show in the confessionals when it came out. So that, that would have been quite early this year, wouldn't it? That, that came out, I think. Um, I listened to it again today uh, before we did this. And one thing that really jumped down to me on the re- re-listen was when you said um, then that this is going to be something that will be spoken about in the future. And you, I think you you said like, you know, in the next five or so, or so years. And it's not five or so years, is it? Because this whole uh, narrative of the phenomena being more spiritual, being more interdimensional, you know, th- this is something that's being like put out there now by people like Tucker Carlson and stuff stuff like that. And I've said on our show before, I think this is the natural progression of the UFO topic in general, is to take it away from the um the Star Trek type the Star Trek lens and to take it somewhere else and possibly possibly not even progress it, possibly take it back to something that maybe we knew more about in the past than we do now. Yeah, I think that's that's going to become an important point. So I'll um, so I'll kind of go over a couple of points. So I am a Christian. I was born a Christian. I was uh, raised in the church. Um, I actually I had I ended up as an adult with a very very conservative uh, point of view on Christianity and on religion. And when I realized what was happening to me, I I had to. De- disconnect from that uh, worldview. When I first heard Ray Boshe discuss the idea that aliens were related to uh, demonic entities, I completely rejected it. I thought it was absolutely ridiculous. Um, at this point, I thought I was dealing with ET aliens from outer space. Um, you know, we call them aliens. I'm not sure why, um, but this is just, you know, the extraterrestrial hypothesis, aliens from other planets, etc. This is what I thought I was doing. And um, I completely rejected anything having to do with demons or spirituality or religion or anything else. I just thought these are other creatures in the universe. You know, the universe is pretty big, and these are other creatures that are out there. And when I realized what was happening with me, I had to just go back to that same idea. I had to stop and just not accept what was being fed to me and just investigate it for myself and really think for myself and just go down the logical analytical road and say, what is actually happening here? What's going on? Is this really, uh, are these beings from other planets? You know, what are they? What is their motive? What are they doing? Why are they doing what they're doing? Why are they here? Um, et cetera. And so, I, I do think this is going to become uh, a topic that we're all going to be dealing with. If you're listening at all to people in ufology, um, it, it seems like I've only been in the community for about a year, but it seems like every year they're waiting for disclosure from the government. Um, and it seems like every year it's imminent. It's coming. It's going to be this year. It's going to be next year. It's going to be next year. So while I... 
again, this year, it's supposed to be October. Okay, well, these dates come and go, and it hasn't yet happened. But yet we seem to be seeing more and more in the mainstream. I mean, just in our Super Bowl commercials, they were four or five commercials mm-hmm. about aliens. And so it seems like they're kind of prepping us, um, even just through the media and through our um, movies, et cetera, for something. Will it happen this year? Will it happen in five or 10 years from now? I don't know. Because every time it seems like it might come out, uh, it kind of gets pushed off and pushed down the road. So I don't know when it will happen, but I think slowly but surely over time, it's going to become more and more of a topic that regular average everyday Americans will be discussing. And um, it's going to have to be big at that point because our regular average everyday Americans and, and people in the UK like yourselves, uh, we're just trying to pay our bills and stay above water at this point. We don't have a lot of time to talk about aliens and where they come from. Um, you know, so despite something like 50% or more of people in the world believe in these creatures, we don't spend a whole lot of time on worrying about it because it doesn't seem to affect our everyday lives. Um, but I'm coming from the standpoint that they do, in fact, affect our everyday lives. And they're affecting people that you guys know in person, probably affecting people you are close with. And uh, it's just something that nobody wants to discuss. And everybody just kind of pushes it under the rug. So imagine getting to the point where we're all comfortable discussing UFOs um, and then moving beyond that conversation into what are they, why are they here, what are they doing, what have they been apparently doing for at least decades, if not possibly thousands of years. Mm-hmm. So it, it, it will be interesting for sure. I mean, it's kind of an exciting time to be alive. So, yeah, there was an interesting thing with that just today. Um, I noticed the, um, the news story that came out about what was like aliens might have been here all along and not from space. And then you saw a list of all the news companies that basically ran exactly the same story. Now, now that's it's not organic. When a story, I, you can kind of get it when if it's a big politics story or something like that, but something as random as aliens are from Earth and all the news networks run with it. It's it's clearly the clearly a memo has gone round at some point. Um, I was going to ask you this later on the podcast, but seeing as how we're, we're on it now, it kind of fits. What do you think the um, the reason is for the disclosure movement? Because um, again, I know on the, the podcast I listened to you on, you said you felt like there was two sides there, and like. Two, two reasons for what it could possibly be uh because i i still i still can't make my mind up about like who 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 the players are what they're doing it for and um if they come from a like a place of good or evil well i think that's probably because there are so many players mm-hmm. and uh probably so many factions of these creatures um so I, I think that it's a, it's a complicated answer. So if we're talking about disclosure, it looks like we have at least two sides. You know, it appears to be one side kind of fighting for this information to come out, and it appears to have another side fighting for the information to not come out. Um, I look at that as, um, I, I would never say that the side that appears to be pushing for disclosure is the good side, and the side appearing to push for not disclosure is the bad side. But that's kind of where normal average everyday thinking would lead us, but we can't really do that. We have to ask ourselves the deeper questions. Who's motivating? You know, what are people being motivated by? What factions are behind this? Is are the non-human intelligence themselves controlling it? Um, I think we have the government involved, I think we have private corporations involved. And so I think it goes beyond just one entity either pushing for disclosure or not pushing for disclosure. Um, And then what would those reasons be? There's probably some good people out there who are thinking, man, this is something that the world needs to know about. It's not okay to hide the very nature of our existence and our reality from humans. It's it's not okay. Um, So there's probably that side out there and there's probably um, some private corporations, uh, contractors, who absolutely do not want that out there because then it's going to lead to their own technology and their own um, abductions of humans and their own using of humans to get this technology. 
Um, and then I think you just have uh, your average everyday people in the United States government and likely around the world uh, being worried about what this means for humanity. Um, you know, do we want to crash the stock market? Do we want to crash the oil markets? You know, do we want people not going to work or being afraid to go to sleep at night? I mean, there's there's so many implications to this. Um, I, and I do think that there's multiple sides at the table. And I think that there's multiple things going on with a lot of different groups. Hopefully that answers your question. But if not, feel free to go right back to it. Do you, do you think um, there is any human collaboration with the entities? Oh, absolutely. There's no question. There's no question that there's human collaboration with the entities. Um, in fact, so many of my experiences have taught me that I think there's a really good chance that um, they're just looking for the same goals mm. uh, with each other. So um, do they have the same motive? Probably not. But working together towards the same goals, I think absolutely see that um, as being one of the possibilities out there. We had had a guest on, uh, Tupacabra. He's great. He's great. For, I consider him a friend of the show. He's a really nice guy. Um, very intelligent, very on it. And we were talking about private companies tracking certain individuals, private contractors tracking families and individuals of experiencers. Uh, and you were just referencing private companies doing uh, abductions. What do you believe the end goals of these are? I mean, I understand that it's the same end goals. I guess I'm asking them, what is the end goal of these abductions and experimentation? What are they trying to ascertain? So for our governments or our military industrial complex um, in these private corporations, these contractors, um, you know, we probably have some billionaires in there somewhere with a lot of money to throw around. I think that they are looking for the tech. You know, they're looking for the tech to use for themselves. I think there's probably some military applications to it, you know, some world domination applications to it. But I think it actually goes beyond that because I think there, there's actually a personal aspect to it as well. I think that, um, have you guys heard about these so-called agreements that might have been made between our governments and between the non-humans? You guys heard yes. about this idea? Mm -hmm. So imagine if some of us are aware of at least a lot of what's actually going on and um, we're aware that there's an end game for you. And these people have the possibility or the chance to maybe save themselves um, through this technology. I hope that makes any sense at all. But I, I do believe that humans have traded um, saving themselves, um, immortality, technology, psychic abilities, et cetera. So kind of gifts from the gods, if you will. Um, and they're using the rest of us, or some of us anyway, to kind of figure out this technology and how it works and how they and how they can best use it. And I hope that answers your question. I was looking to also ask, um, we know with abduction phenomenon, there's a seems to be a correlation to uh, phenotype, blood types. Are you aware of what yours is? I am, and I am not an Rh negative blood type. You're a positive. So I'm positive. I'm a positive, okay. um, although I likely come from a negative line. So okay. I do have uh, bats in my history, in my genetics. Um, so for it, you, it would be a non-dominant gene. It would be recessive. Yeah. yeah. And it, it does look like that's going to end up being a factor for both mm -hmm. humans and non-humans. They're, they're definitely interested. They're interested in the RH factor. They're also interested in uh, things like the MC1R gene, which is the red-headed mm -hmm. gene. Um, there's a lot of abductees who have a lot of heritage in common, uh, mm -hmm. heritage, uh, Basque, Native American. You know, there's certain heritages that kind of pop up, and I actually have all three of those. So I actually find myself interesting because I don't fall into some of the categories, but I do fall into others. Mm -hmm. So putting, again, putting those puzzle pieces together, a lot of us have uh, military family, um, intelligence families. You know, there's a lot of things that link a lot of objectives together, but 
I don't, I can't, you know, I've never been able to narrow it down and get, you know, down to the, down to the nitty gritty as to what they're asking. No. So it seems to be a few different things. Uh, a strange jump. You had also mentioned in a podcast that I'd heard talking about the lady, right? Uh, the woman who appears to some and not to others. I've always found that interesting because you were the first one I've heard reference it in a way that is not so um, positive fanboyish. Mm-hmm. And I am not a fanboy. I'm not a fanboy of hers. I have a distinct feeling, maybe even an understanding of what that is. And uh, I'm always a little off put when I start hearing people gush about it. Uh, I was wondering if you could expand on that, Anik, because I think that was that was interesting. It caught it caught me in a way that I've never heard anyone else talk. And about. I don't even remember what I said about the lady, either, but I am also I'm not a fan either. Yeah. Um, so even even when I first heard about the lady, I so I came to this topic completely a complete novice, having no idea what was going on. I just knew about my own personal experiences. Mm -hmm. And then I started coming across other people who are having the same types of experiences, other abductees, people who have seen a lady. Um, So just on a personal level, um, my biological father's family were involved with the lady uh, and an entity called the Nino de Atocha, and it's basically a baby Jesus. Um, go ahead. Wow. Uh, I was going to ask, uh, was the family involved with the occult? Absolutely. Yeah, they were involved with the occult. Um, I have, my, my biological father is still alive, but I have diary entries from him saying that he would, he used to think Christ was the real Christ until he met uh, De Nino, and he was turned in onto the actual real Christ, which is this, in my, my personal opinion, fake baby Jesus. Um, and the lady and fake baby Jesus are involved together. You know, these entities kind of show themselves all, all over the world. You know, they show that I think Tupa has seen the lady. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not sure if he's Me too. Her. Me too. Me too. All no, I can't, I, can't, I can't remember. My mom's Reese is negative. And, um, and you're a I, ginger. I, I, yeah, I am a ginger. <laughs> I, I, I apparently saw her when I was like three years old. I used to tell my mom. And then one night my mom saw her that same night that she saw her, she had a miscarriage. So I have no idea. My mom calls me the miracle child because she had eight miscarriages because something, wow. something to do with the gene doesn't, I, I don't understand it, but yeah. Mm, or uh, something I, else. Um, yeah. Because you probably have a fascinating story that you maybe you haven't looked into. I'm not familiar with y'all, y'all stories, so. That's I can't remember seeing the white lady. Uh, yeah. My mom said, said I used to say that. So. I, I've, well, I've had, had an interesting history already, just with the yeah. eight miscarriages. So that's. I've fine. had a I've had a conversation with the white lady before. I'm aware. Oh boy. Uh, and the male, um, opposite side of the fence. Um, that's why I'm not a fan of. I, I picked a team. <laughs> yeah, I picked, I picked a team. my team too. And it yeah. doesn't include the lady or De Nino. Um, yeah. So here's what's interesting. If you were to ask, I just if you're hanging out with 20 friends in the backyard and you were to ask your 20 friends, how many of you um, have seen an alien? Probably none of them have seen an alien. Uh, you should meet my well, friends. Well, depending on your crowd. Okay? <laughs> then, I, I live next to a government secret lab. Oh, there we go. So everybody there is just, everybody put the phones in the box. They off? We outside? Well, Let's start talking. <laughs> There's probably a reason why all three of you were involved in this topic. Um, so you can ask your same 20 friends, have, has anyone seen a UFO? Well, if you're at L. Dave's house, uh, a lot of those hands are going to go up, right? But then if you ask your 20 friends, has anyone seen a shadow being or the lady or fake Jesus? A lot of hands are going to go up. And there are so many of us out there who have seen these apparitions. And it's, in my humble opinion, all related. I mean, even if you look at the Chris Bledsoe case, you guys are probably um, familiar with that. Yeah. Yep. Um, you have even Bledsoe going from we would call what we would call what he described as we would call him aliens, you know, in his backyard, all the way up to the lady, and it's all part of the same phenomenon, including shadow beings that are in his family or his son or his house. So 
this phenomenon, it's all related. And a lot of people do not want to wrap their minds in on that. Um, I'm not sure why. I think there's I think there's a big disconnect between uh, the science and um, religion or the spiritual mm-hmm. stuff that's out there. And I think until we bring those two things together, we're not going to have a full understanding of what's going on. So we have the science kind of try to put us into this box of materialism. And then we mm-hmm. have uh, religions saying everything is supernatural. And I think what's going to happen is it's, the answer is going to be somewhere in between. So I think a lot of this is actually technology. Um, so, yeah, we have the lady. Um, my family um, was basically worshiping these entities. They were involved in the cult. They were involved in human trafficking, um, you know, rituals out in the desert, et cetera, et cetera. And so I actually end up having this in my family history, uh, unfortunately. I also very likely had my own personal experience with the lady as well. And so I'm not a fan. Um, the lady who's the, the entity involved with blood. So actually calls herself half war. And so now we're going back to the Egyptian gods. Um, she didn't have a great reputation. She didn't start out with a great reputation and then she, you know, got a little bit better of a reputation. But I think all of these entities are just these small G baby gods. Um, mm-hmm. They've been around for thousands of years. They were probably here before us. Um, and I think it's very interesting how closely they are tied to the so-called aliens uh, and extraterrestrials. If I had to guess, I'd say there's probably about 200 of them. Um, about. Probably about. about. Yeah. <laughs> if not exactly. That would be my thinking as well. And, and by the way, Again, I want to reiterate, I did not start here. I think Mm -hmm. um, people like to put me in this little box because I say now that I'm, well, I started out as a Christian and then I kind of disconnected and then I came came right back. But so people like to to put me in a little box when they hear me speak because they say, well, of course she thinks everything is demonic because she's a Christian. And Mm -hmm. it's just simply not true. I started out thinking these were our space brothers from outer space, extraterrestrial. That's it. There was no other option. And I mentioned earlier in the show, I actually recoiled physically from the idea that these were, had anything to do with uh, religion or demons or anything spiritual whatsoever. That was just not on the table for me. It wasn't on the table until much further down the line in the story that I started putting this big, bigger picture together and realizing what I think I'm dealing with. Um, and, and it all goes back to exactly what you're talking about. Are, are we? Are you L? Are you Dave? Are you L Dave? L Dave. It's a play L-Dave. for the people who read the big L-Dave. book. Yeah, I think it's funny. Um, uh, and yeah, I think it does lead right back down that road. That's where I have found myself. Now I um, am. Sus- I'm suspicious of all these entities, not just the lady. You know, yep. there's different various entities presenting themselves across the world. That a lot of them tie back to. Um, the African gods, um, Santeria gods, etc. So I'm suspicious of all of them. And that's just kind of, I just keep them all in one basket of mm-hmm. suspicion. And, and I don't um, give them any credence whatsoever. So the tie to you and your family you can trace from your father and whatever happened there, it would lead me to another question. Was there, to your knowledge, some kind of a pack that maybe was made with a viscous fluid on your father's side or on that lineage with you? I can't imagine there not being a pact. So I, unfortunately, my I did not even meet my biological father until I was in my 30s. And so the family history comes to me secondhand. Um, gotcha. So I wasn't uh, up to my eyeballs in the family history. I just listened. To him, and, and I have various uh, aunts and, and uncle and uh, grandmother, et cetera, at the time. There, a few of them have passed. Um, but I can't imagine there not being agreement. I, I mentioned that I have a diary entry from him mm-hmm. that he was shown the truth, and then he basically pledges his allegiance to these entities. Um, he, I mean, if you could sell your soul to the wrong entity, that's what he did. Uh, gotcha. They were levitating him in his backyard. Again, he was involved in human trafficking. I mean, if we have no idea 
whether the entity presenting herself as the lady is always the same entity, right? She could be yeah, no idea. Uh, showing herself all over the world. There might be 50 different entities claiming to be a lady. We don't know. Mm -hmm. um, but I just kind of keep them all in the same bucket. An entity um, making a pact with my biological father, who's literally human trafficking, trafficking yeah. to uh, names that y'all know. Um, that can't possibly be the true and real um, benevolent uh, god, or, or you know, in ufology we call it the mm -hmm. phenomenon, the benevolent side of the phenomenon. Well, if the lady is uh, directing Bledsoe and she's also directing my father to traffic uh, kids, then you know, what do we have there? It can't possibly be. You can tell a lot about what team she's on by her fan group, and that would be the Bilderberg group, and that's not a good fan team to have. Wow, that's not the that's not the fan club anyone should want. You have information I don't have, so that's that's interesting. Uh, yeah, they invited Bledsoe out as an honored guest. Uh, he didn't go allegedly. Uh, yeah, the, and again, I want to make sure that people don't think that I'm discouraging Bledsoe himself. I've heard that he's yeah, a, a gentleman and he's a lovely mm -hmm. person and he's probably very kind and sincere. Um, but I'm not a fan of his entities for sure. Uh, yeah, I'm not on that team. I'm not on that team. Uh, I don't want nothing to do with it. Uh, I think it's I think it's interesting as everything goes through. I've heard you talk about a lot of things, and some things I haven't. I didn't get to listen to the full of any episode because I have a horde of children, and uh, my wife was out of town for work, so I just got stuck with it. And then I had a golf cart delivered, and I was just like, "Oh man, I gotta come on!" And so it's it's been an interesting day. It's been an interesting week. Um, but listen to that. I would take some guesses. I did hear you talk about you dealt with and potentially still do deal with, deal with uh, sleep paralysis, um, uh, lucid dreaming on the verge of nightmare dreaming, uh, things I didn't hear you reference. And I you don't have to, I mean, I could be wrong. If I was going to take a guess, I would say from time to time, especially during waking hours, you feel led, if not hear an actual auditory voice in your head that presents itself or someone that you trust guiding you on a path. Would I be correct in those assumptions? So the voices I hear don't guide me on a path, but I'm absolutely yeah. being guided on a path. Gotcha. And so I think for me, it's really important to, um, cause when we say these things and this isn't my implication is people jump to schizophrenia. That's not what I'm no, at. It's, absolutely. I've been around the subject enough. I'm, I'm trying to correlate things in a polite way to give you an opportunity. And I think you're picking up on it to speak about it in a, in a way I think that'll help a lot of people who don't. Yeah, I think sense. it's important to know or, or to understand that um, you guys have probably seen a psychiatrist or, or is he a psychologist or psychiatrist who's actually putting the work yeah, out there. That's we've been right. trying to get him on desperately. Certainly yeah. have. Get that yeah. guy on. He's amazing. Um, and put even when I was on the job, is that Ollie? Put a good word in. Yeah. Um, even when I was on the job, I could tell a lot of, I can class a lot of schizophrenics. Um, mm -hmm. but there's always something there. <laughs> I always thought, man, what is he seeing? You know, it, because a lot of times they would, they would talk, start talking about the stuff that was incredible, you know, stuff yeah. that I, I, I listened to. It. Um, so I do hear uh, a lot of auditory. Um, is it outside or inside? I've had or both. both. Okay. Yeah, I've had both. Um, so two separate things. So the voice and, and the mission, I think you were kind of getting that. I'm just writing yep. up so I don't forget. Um, so the voice I hear is, um, I've had it both. I've had it inside my head and then outside my head. Um, and I've actually, my husband's actually heard some of the auditory um, messages. I shouldn't say messages. He's actually heard some of the sounds that have happened outside of my head. Um, mm -hmm. Things like knocking and chimes and bells, etc. Um, as far as voices inside my head, I get messages constantly. I get messages um, in uh, the form of audio. I get mm -hmm. messages, what a lot of people call them downloads, where mm -hmm. I just get a bunch of information plop right into my head. And in that moment, I know all of the secrets of the universe. And I understand everything. And then when it comes to actually trying to translate it and to get it out and to put it into language, it's, it can be very difficult. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of times I just try my best and, and jot down some notes and write down the overall idea of what's happening. 
but the audible messages I get are very interesting. They're usually pretty short um, okay. sentences, a few words um, and sentences. Uh, but with all the messages I get, with the downloads I get, with the messages I get, I, um, and even with the mission that I find myself on right now, I am always looking for the deception and the manipulation. Mm -hmm. I ask myself every single day, am I being used like Chris Bledsoe, even though my audience is very, very small, um, am I being used by the phenomenon to get out a message um, that may or may not be true? So I'm always looking for the deception in any mm -hmm. information that I get, in any information I come across, any road that I feel like I'm being locked down. I'm always trying to even just evaluate myself or does this, you know, does this even make sense? Am I myself being used? And, and I think I am being used to be fine, um, by both sides. Um, your, uh, your experiences as far, as far as like, like malevolent forces, that like the malevolent side of it's quite obvious, you know, when you're being snatched from your bed and things are happening to you, it's it, it's quite obvious what that what those parts are. Um, have you encountered a benevolent side to this that you could that that you can at least semi trust to be benevolent? You know, obviously you've you 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 just said there you're you're going to be skeptical of whatever you're given, but it seems that if there is any benevolent side to this phenomena that it um it, it 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 comes across in such a subtle way and it's it it doesn't help as much as the uh, malevolent side tries to destroy yeah i call it uh non-interventional mm -hmm. um so the benevolent side seems to me to work through it, it's subtle it works with the synchronicities and guidance um I think the benevolent side likes to see us helping ourselves mm. along the way and not just, you know, laying back and saying, when are the benevolent entities going to come save me? Um, so that's been my experience with the benevolent side. I think it is there. Uh, Christians would call that side angels, you know, messengers, messengers of God, what have you. They seem to hand information out at the exact right time. Um, you know, through a lot of subtle synchronicities, open doors, uh, just information flowing um, rather than the interventional side. So it, I think that, you know, the whole idea of having an angel on one side and a devil on the other side is probably going to have some truth to it. And I think the, the negative side, its job is to pull us away from the light and you know, they'll do it. I, I say it by hook or by crook. It's just an old uh, saying from the job. They'll do whatever it takes. Um, mm -hmm. The good side is very, is very subtle. I think the only time they become interventional is when the bad side is completely overstepped. When the negative side is overstepped, I think they can and do become interventional. Um, but I think they are ruled by some universal laws that, um, you know, how much growth can we achieve if we're if it's being handed to us all the time. The rules. And so I think, you know, there are just some old parables that will come into play here. And I think they're just very, very different. And it's not the ones showing up and ripping us out of our beds at night mm -hmm. on the good side. And unfortunately, most people in this <clears throat> uh, field believe that they are the good side and mm -hmm. um, that they're going to show up and save us from ourselves. When you say synchronicities, what type of synchronicities do you mean? Oh, dear. Well, I think um, we've probably all experienced a synchronicity, you know, when something's happening at exactly the right time and it seems like a coincidence. Um, and yet it opens a door that you never would have been able to, um, you know, go go through before. Um, so I'm sure we're, we are all aware of these synchronicities. Um, I get numbers and things like that. It's, yeah. Well... The negative side does synchronicities as well. So I'll just throw that into the mix. Um, so when the negative side does synchronicities, it's very blatant and in your face, and um, it's not subtle. When the good side does synchronicities, there are a lot of times they're subtle. And it's one of those things like, oh, man, I can't believe that just happened. Oh, wow, look at that. You know, my friend I was thinking of, she just called me, and now I have this job opportunity, et cetera. Um, 
a synchronicity from the negative side might look like uh, you're crying in a bar because my boyfriend just broke up with me and here comes this amazing, charming uh, millionaire who has a plane parked outside and he wants to whisk me off, uh, you know, into fantasy land. So those could both be a synchronicity, but um, one is very blatant and kind of in your face and, and you can kind of catch it. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a lot of red flags around it. And then on the good side, a lot of times it's just very subtle. It'll be something beneficial to you. It could be something you've been working toward for yourself that you're trying to make happen and all of a sudden you go away from So I do want to throw out there the negative side and, and, and do some synchronicities as well. That's my personal opinion. I have um, a couple other questions that'll be kind of strange, not to jump in there, but I, sure. we, it's very important to this topic. Keep jumping. Yeah. I do that a lot. I apologize. I do too. I, I so, I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, but not sorry. Uh, speaking of synchronicities and these things that are happening, have you ever had shared dreaming? Dreams where you were in there with another person and both of you recalled the same dream? Um, I have, but to go beyond that, I've actually had some interesting shared experiences with my husband that were probably mm -hmm. way beyond dreams. Okay. Um, my husband's actually seen some of the same entities I have seen. Um, we've had a couple of instances where we were in the same place um, on the same kind of so-called mission. And um, so the answer to that is yes. And what we were doing for a very long time and we still do is I have a journal, I write down, you know, every morning, whatever I experienced, you know, mm -hmm. through the night, sometimes, sometimes during the day, different things that happen. And, and he would do his own. And when we would compare notes, we would say, oh, dang, was it this, was it that? And come to find out we were actually in a very similar, if not the same place and in, in, in the same, um, I would definitely categorize it as at least lucid dream category, if not mm -hmm. possibly even now. Interesting. Uh, uh, I was just gonna say with you, uh, your husband, did he uh, have experiences before you got together? Yeah, so my husband had an interesting experience when he was a child. Um, I think uh, he was six or seven or eight years old, and he woke up in his room with an entity in his bedroom. Um, and at the very same time he was waking up and seeing the entity, his father was running into the room. His father ran into the room and scooped him up and ran out of the room. So it also seemed at the same time his father was aware of something. Now, unfortunately, his father has passed um, wow. but it seemed that his father was aware of something happening at it, the same time that he was seeing um, something there. So, and you're going to find with a lot of abductees, a lot of people who call themselves experiencers were actually brought together. Um, in many cases, a lot of people are brought together. Um, it's not unusual to find married or, or even just dating couples and both of them have a story. Mm -hmm. Another thing I was going to jump out. So I'm going to back to the, the questionnaire. I have a questionnaire in my head I'm working through uh, for a reason that I will not reveal. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone listen, just deal with it. Uh, have you or your spouse ever seen twinkly lights in the air? Uh, no. Okay. So every UFO I have seen. Oh, has, not in the sky. Uh, I mean, like in the room. During an abduction. Oh, nope. it, oh in our home. So yeah. the only thing I've seen, I've seen in our home, I've seen, uh, not twinkling, I've seen whitish, um, not quite orbs, not enough to be defined as an orb, not with a lot of definition, but white, um, I I'm going to use the word orbs because it's not a good word, but not very defined, very, um, you know, almost secret. And I've also seen a cigar shaped uh, shadow. And, and this is just during the day, a okay. cigar shaped shadow floating right in front of my face. That he has um, also seen? Oh, that he's also seen. Yeah. That's a good question. I don't think, I don't think so. I don't think that he has also seen. No. Okay. I, I, could, I could ask him, I could even revisit that. But yeah. both of us at the same time. Or, or seen the same question. thing within the same period of time. Uh, it's okay. It's, it's just. No, it, it, makes me it's it makes me wonder. Yeah, it, you know, there'll be times that we're talking and, you know, reminding ourselves of each other, and, you know, oh, remember this happened, remember that happened. So it's a good question. I'll ask him. Yeah. Have, has he ever heard the voice? 
I don't think it's so. No. Part of the conversation. Never. I don't think so. The, no. the things he's heard that I'm aware of are the bells and the chimes and the knocking gotcha. and those types of sounds. But mm -hmm. I'll, I'll ask him. I'll actually write that down and ask him both of those questions. So good ones. Can I ask you about the knocking? Which, what do you mean by the knocking? Sure. Um, so I think a lot of people experience this kind of in-between state. It's called hypnagogia, you know, right when they're falling asleep. Yeah, um, I, I do. And you're going to find a lot of people who hear these sounds. Um, and then that would be a sound kind of that comes, that's in your own head, right? It's in that in-between state. It's hypnagogia or hypnopompia, depending on where you're at in your um, dream state. Um, so that we have both heard it leads me to believe that this is actually happening, not just in our heads, right? If we're both hearing an, a sound from outside of ourselves and we're both becoming aware after hearing a sound, that lends to it not being a hypnagogia, which by the way, just because you hear something in hypnagogia doesn't mean that it's not real or not happening, but it does differentiate between a sound that is happening in the head versus a sound that's actually happening in, in the physical. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think of it as sounding like a sound that's out that's outside you, but meant just for you. Yes. That's a good yeah. way to put it. That's a good way to put it. I have been saved from abductions by sounds. Mm -hmm. By knocking, uh, by John, by chimes, by bells, um, by someone yelling my name. Um, yeah, no, so I often, I often wake up with what, what feels like, like three really loud knocks, like someone's trying to knock through my front door downstairs. And a lot of times, it's three knocks. I think a mm -hmm. lot of people hear that very same thing, which is interesting. Um, I think we're going to find out that, um, or maybe we used to know, and, and we've forgotten in the Western world that even just your regular average everyday dream states and your hypnagogy and hypnopompia states mm -hmm. are, are actually relevant and something we should be looking at and investigating and, and considering mm -hmm. for um, being important, I should say, and not just writing, you know, writing these things off. It, it almost doesn't make sense, does it, with a dream state? Like it, it, when, you, when you consider half of our life is spent asleep, it almost doesn't make sense that it would just be to give our brains a rest. You know, yeah. that, that we, we would spend these great, these, these great lengths of time like switched off just because we need to like process the fact that of, of the things we saw during the waking hours. It seems like a lot to, it seems like a lot to give away just for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really does. And I think there are other cultures, especially ancient culture, uh, cultures, um, and they didn't write off that state of being. And it's for all of us. It's not just for some people who might um, have interesting dreams. Mm -hmm. um, I think we should be paying a lot more attention to it, even if it's, um, you know, we could be dreaming and, and just, you know, filing our, our subconscious uh, away for another day. We could be processing any type of shadow work. We could be processing karma, for lack of a better word. We could be learning lessons in our dreams. Mm. Um, you know, we could act, act out almost anything in our dreams. I just I think they're more important than we give them credit for, even if there's nothing anomalous happening at all. But I think it also happens to be that while we're in that state, we're much more vulnerable um, to these entities um, for them to access us. Mm. how many times have you seen how, how many times you think you've seen uh because it's probably a more more than you can remember actual grays that's a good question so what i see the most if everybody wants to know i'm not sure i've ever said mm. this what i see the most is uh the appearance of humans and now I think that we have the appearance of humans and then actual real humans. And um, you know, there has to be some uh, discernment there when, look, when we're looking at that. Um, but actual grays out of, if I've had 300 experiences in the last few years, I'd say 25%. Maybe thirty percent involve what I see as grays, mm -hmm. but it's important to know that grays and the others they have the ability to mask their appearance, and so they're very often projecting um, a different appearance. 
And so they're very often trying to appear as human. Uh, they might appear as a dead relative. They might appear as a cartoon character. They might appear as your boss, etc. cetera. Um, it's some type of projection that disability that they have. And um, so there have been many times where I have looked at a gray and known it was a gray, even though it was pretending or trying to look human. So there's probably a lot of overlap there. Mm -hmm. What do they what do they look like? Like like because we've had people explain what they've seen as a gray, but how do you how would you describe a gray alien, a, gray, a, a demon, what, whatever it is, entity. What, how would well, you describe it? Well, they're not what? the same thing. Um, so I've seen, I, I had the entities in my bedroom. They were very tall. So they would not be considered your average everyday gray. Most people, when they're talking about grays, they're talking about the little short ones that are really mm -hmm. Um A lot of times my first clue that it's a gray is that they're very short and it's obvious. They're not tall enough to even pretend to blend in. Um, so a gray that I saw in 3D was, it had an extremely pointy chin and, um, very, very high cheekbones and it had the eyes. Um, but it was not your average gray that you would see being portrayed because it had such an extremely pointy, it was a V chin. It was very, very obvious how, how pointy the chin was. It had a very, very long neck. Um, and those are the things that stood out to me on that gray. But there are different types of grays. And so a lot of the grays I see, they look like old men. So they look like a mixture of a child because of their height. But they look very, the grays I see are very wrinkly. And they look like old men, um, for lack of a better way to put it. Um, the grays I see very frequently do not have those eyes that you guys see. I think it will turn out that those eyes or lenses um, are covering that they put over their eyes. So their eyes are much smaller than that. And they just like look like wrinkly old men to me, most of them. But I also see these strange blue things that are also the height of grays and they're not as wrinkly. Mm -hmm. So, if uh, when you talk, say the greys that um, they have much smaller eyes than like what pop culture give, gives us, would you liken them more to Alistair Crowley's lamb? Oh, um, that's interesting. I, 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 I have a picture here. Um, what was that? So, no, bigger than that. Bigger than that. Mm -hmm. um, the ones I see do not have that giant head. Like that, that big, mm -hmm. that big giant forehead. Um, their heads are smaller than that, but bigger than ours. Uh, bald and very wrinkly, um, but bigger eyes than that. Somewhere in between a regular eye and um, the big eyes that we see, which are probably going to be in coverings on the eyes. Um, what other uh, entities do you see? Because I know you've, you've mentioned uh, uh, mantids and reptilians as well. So I have never seen a mantid that I am consciously aware of. So all right. of my memories are they're conscious, uh, it's conscious awareness. And I'm getting a lot of snippets of what's happening. I'm not getting mm -hmm. a full three hours of, of information. Mm -hmm. um, but that my mom has had a mantid in her bedroom very recently. Right, that's what. December. Yeah, and so um, I see reptilians that don't look like your average everyday reptilians that you guys are probably more familiar with. And I see the grays and I see a lot of hybrids and a lot of um, what appears to be humans, whether they're humans or not, um, remains to be seen or might still be in question. And then that would be separate from, you know, sometimes it can be hard to tell. So sometimes on the hybrids, it's easy to tell. You can tell by their energy. You can tell sometimes, a lot of times I'm looking at their hair. The hair can be very thin, especially the early stage hybrids. Their hair is thin. Um, they still have those pointy features. Um, they're putting off a little bit, or, or quite a bit more emotion than the regular grays are putting off. And so those can be obvious to me. A lot of times I can look and see, okay, you're not actually a human. You just look human and it's your hybrid. 
Um, but then there are, they're so good now with the hybrids that they would pass just, you wouldn't even know. You wouldn't even know that they're, that they're hybrids unless you have a psychic connection to one of them, unless you notice their psychic signature as they're passing by. Um, and then what was the rest of your question? Um, I, no, no, I was going to say that then. Do you think the, if, if they can conceal what they actually look like, do you oh, think there's a possi yeah. but do you think there's a possibility that there is like a single entity then that's just projecting itself as all these different things because i've i've often thought um when you look back on like folklore and stuff obviously we've had like stories like pixies and goblins and things like that and the um even if, like back in the bible you talk about like, chariots of fire and things i've wondered whether these things just project themselves to look like things that we can accept at the time and so that it would be a good reason why uh, say ufos for instance like the the craft they seem to morph and sh morph with our own design philosophies you know like the, the 1960s ufos look very much like 1960s cars um so do you think do you think there's a possibility that there is, that this is just one thing that's projecting itself differently um, is it possible? Yes. I don't think that that's actually the case, though. I think we have four or five uh, different types of entities projecting themselves. Do you think they're um, compete, pe competing or working with each other for the same goal? I think it's both. And so I think they are working together. And I think they're working together toward the same goal. But at the same time, there's a hierarchy involved in the system. And so they're kind of always trying to one-up each other and, and get stuff for themselves or, or get higher up on the food chain. So I think it's both. Um, I'm not sure if, I just, if you guys have heard me say this before, but I liken it to uh, a cartel boss who's kicking it somewhere in central California. And he's a shot caller and he's running the show, right? And he, he, he gives his directives to his guys who are underneath him, his underlings in the jail. And then those guys go out and put the word out onto the street. Now, you might have various factions of gangs. Um, some of them might even be rival gangs. Um, some of them maybe shot at each other last week. But at the same time, they're all trying to run dope money, guns, and sex. And they're all trying to make uh, money and gain power and gain prestige off of this very same goal. And so they might have different ways of carrying out this goal. They might have um, slightly different agendas but yet they're all working together toward the same thing. So does that make sense? And it's very much yeah. a hierarchy. And then who's about the shot caller is the question. You know, some mm. cartel boss um, in South America somewhere. So it just kind of keeps going on that, on that hierarchy. And so you could have two different and even rival games working toward the same goal um, together at the same time. Do you have any theories about where they come from? Because I know you've said you've said you've said before that you don't think they are extraterrestrial, as in from a different planet and stuff like that. And I that's that's where I've come to land with this stuff as well. Uh, but if, if you say there's different entities, are all these entities coming from the same place? So I think they all come from right here. I think mm -hmm. they're they are here. They probably okay. So let me separate. So things that we refer to as aliens. Aliens are, let's just say, your average mantid, reptilian, tall gray, short gray, uh, Nordic. Those are your four or five different categories of what we call, we refer to them as aliens. I think that these, and I'm just going to say generally speaking, are um, created beings, hybrid beings, and probably along the avatar. Um, side. So they're being used to interact with us uh, more easily. But I think what's behind them is a hierarchy of what we would refer to as spiritual entities. We, that's where the demons would fall into. That's where uh, the so-called fallen angels, etc., cetera, um, the baby gods, etc., would fall into that category. And they're all on the same team. Um, could the mantids have their own goal? Yes. Could the reptilians have their own goals? Yes but they're all working together toward uh, the same agenda. Um, and and that is the soul. The, what's that? And that is the soul. Well, ultimately, yes. And so let's just say that the mantids 
care about um, getting enough food for the day. Maybe they even like human flesh. And so that's what they care about the most. Um, let's say, and, and I'm just making this up, let's say the reptilians care about um, maybe it's their job, maybe the human soul is their job. Maybe the reptilians actually want to rule th the 3D. Maybe they want to, you know, have power and control over the 3D and that's their, that's their agenda or that's their goal. Um, but yet they're all working for the spiritual beings behind the scenes. And what's the goal of the spiritual beings behind the scenes? I fully believe that it is the um, ultimate destiny of the human soul. And so I do believe that we have this so-called good side and we have this so-called bad side and each of us, them are pulling us in different directions. And I do think it matters. I think that, um, ultimately it matters very much. And I think that, um, there's some type of cosmic war happening and we are not only pawns, but we're also some kind of prize in this war. So if you look at your average everyday alien, I don't think they came from anywhere but here. They look like creatures already here on earth. You know, people start throwing out the panspermia, et cetera, you know, the Anunnaki, et cetera. But if we just look at what's right in front of our face, they look like the mantids here on earth. They look like reptilians here on earth. The greys look like us. I mean, they might as well be human children or human something. Um, so I think they came from right here. I think they were probably hybridized um, by uh, other beings. But I think those other beings were probably already here as well. And I think mm -hmm. that they were probably here before us. Have you guys ever heard Timothy Alvarino talk about the elder race? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I kind of think along those lines that um, God created these uh, more spiritual beings for the spiritual realm, and then he created humans to rule the earth. And I think that um, they're still there ruling the spiritual realm, and I think we're still here trying to rule the earth. But I think that we are very much influenced um, by what's happening in the spiritual realm by the spiritual beings. You have but described this. It's right here on earth. And I think they have limited travel. I think they're probably traveling to the moon and to Mars and, you know, mm -hmm. et cetera. But I, I think it's all right here and, and all local. Go ahead. You, because you, you, you do describe them having nuts and bolts craft still. But behind them is the a, a demon that is essentially controlling the, the reptilians, the mantids, the greys. You mentioned, I think you mentioned seeing a demon and there was a ship involved and there was a tunnel that the the humans was go being yeah. almost zombie-like going in there. First question, can you describe what the demon looked like? And, and secondly, I know you touched on what they you thought they were doing with these bodies that they were almost getting reincarnated mm. but it kind of ended there um that was really close to the end of the the confessionals podcast and i just want you to touch a little bit more on that because i really read that i found so interesting but like if you first of all the demon yeah so we ended up going down a bunch of different rabbit holes kind of like we're doing now <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> we do jumping, that i yeah. end up jumping all around um, so what the demons look like, um, they very frequently look like, uh, they start out looking like humans. Um, but what's underneath there is frequently an animal head. Um, so this is a head of, there's a couple of different types. Uh, one of them has the head of a mixture between a dog and a pig. Um, it's very, it's, it would be very difficult to articulate, but I've come across a couple of images that somewhat resemble um, what I've seen, a black dog head, but with integrated ears and almost a pig snout. So it's just kind of a combination of a pig and a dog um, on a human body. So a pig dog head on a human body. And then the next type, it looks like the head of almost a panda bear. Um, it's got, it's black and white, and again, it's an animal head on a human body. 
um, these entities act very differently from your average everyday um, SAID, right? Or even a hybrid, you know, that they're carrying out what seems to be the hybrid agenda. Um, they're very task oriented, et cetera. Um, so these entities um, are doing other things, you know, besides this hybrid agenda. Um, these entities uh, took me to what my perception was, was a giant uh, mothership, for lack of a better term. Um, the ship had a, I call it a tunnel slide. And again, I'm just trying to come up with descriptive words mm -hmm. um, for what was actually happening. So there was a hole in the floor of this ship, and I was escorted to this hole by um, one of the demons. And they were trying to get me to jump down this hole. They were trying to get me to jump down um, this tunnel slide. And um, being the suspicious person that I am, I was standing there doing the A and jumping down that slide. I don't know where to get goes. I, they're not going to get me to do that. And so it was very interesting because why didn't they just push me down the slide? Um, they were trying to trick me to get down the slide. Mm -hmm. And that just, to me, uh, was some type of level of consent or permission they were looking mm -hmm. for. They wanted me to do this on my own. They tried different things to trick me to get down the slide. Um, the slide was covered in a white foam. And I came to find out later that there's actually something called quantum foam that scientists are now trying to wrap their minds around. Um, so I thought that was a really interesting tidbit. Sometimes I come away with these things that I, that I talk about or that I write down or that I think, man, what was that? What is that that I saw? Well, I might have seen exactly what it actually is. And I usually, a lot of times I will find that out later. Um, there was a line of humans. A lot of times I see humans, uh, they're in zombie mode. They're completely checked out. They have no idea what's going on. In this particular case, I either saw what I think is part of the reincarnation cycle, or that's what they wanted me to think of. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of always try to come at that from both angles. Anything time I'm being shown something or given information, is this what I saw or is this what they want me to think of? Think I saw. And so these uh, humans were all just jumping down, just mindlessly jumping down the tunnel. And I was standing there asking myself, where does this tunnel go? You know, what's happening in the tunnel, why are they going down the tunnel? And then meanwhile, there were rays um, trying to project themselves as my relatives, saying, no, no, this is good, this is fun. You know, just jump, jump down the tunnel. So we're trying a couple of different tactics to get me to voluntarily jump down this tunnel. So the whole thing was super weird. Mm -hmm. And I started realizing that the zombies jumping, or, they weren't even actually jumping and kind of just stepping off into the abyss down into the tunnel that they were being whisked off to somewhere. And um, it's a complicated story, but I ended up later getting this drop box of information plopped into my head that this is actually part of the reincarnation cycle. And again, I always look at that information with suspicion. Um, I was to a point uh, maybe two years ago where I was, I started out not believing in the information and then I got into, well, I think there, there could be something to this, at least mm -hmm. for some of us, maybe not for all of us, but there could be some truth to this new information thing. Um, but again, I, I always look at their information with suspicion. So I got this Dropbox download of the aliens actually sucking up souls and setting them down this tunnel slide into reincarnation cycle um i don't have a lot of information other than that other than other people um believe that the grays are somehow involved in the incarnation process in ufology we have um stories of insiders being threatened with afterlife implications if they come out um as a whistleblower um, there's a uh, grave scene during near-death experiences. Mm -hmm. And this is part of what actually devastated me. This is part of what turned me upside down. Because at the same time, they're actually removing my soul from my body. 
And now we have this weird tunnel slide and humans just being sent into the abyss. I don't even know where they were going or what was happening to them. And they're trying to get me to do the same thing to myself. Um, and the big picture starts becoming that these greys or and or the beings behind the greys have some type of control or involvement in with our souls and, and the afterlife. And whether reincarnation is real or not, they have some type of agency over us. Um, and it might only be some of us. You know, it might not be everybody that they have agency over. Um, so that was part of the really deep, dark rabbit hole that I fell down and, and part of what devastated me just as a human, just to think, oh, wow, these creatures, they're able to not only just snatch me out of my bed and, and take my soul out of my body, but they might actually be in charge of this shebang uh, mm -hmm. when I exit this body into the afterlife. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, was, it was devastating for me when I realized that this was happening. Did I answer your question, Ollie? Yeah, yeah. Like, where, where, when you got taken, were you with your husband at the, t at the time? No, uh, he's not one of the ones. Oh, well, I mean, we were both in bed sleeping, if that's what you mean physically. Yeah. And, and yes. did he did he ha experience anything when you told him that story? Um, did he have any, any, any strange dreams that night? Or That's a good question. I usually, so what happens is I usually write everything down. And then sometimes I'll jot myself a little note if he had something interesting happen that day. So I would definitely have to look that up. Um there were at least two or three other times though, for sure. But I can't, so I've had so many things happen in the last couple of years mm -hmm. that I, I just wouldn't know that for sure. I'd have to go back and kind of look through my journal and then look through his. And he actually stopped writing his stuff down. He got bored and tired of it. So <laughs> he doesn't even do it anymore. Um, Is it increasing since you start talking about it? Well, at this time last year, um, I was terrified to go to sleep at night. I was sleeping in a helmet. I'm not sure you, you probably heard me say that. Maybe on the, yeah. on the I heard you mention that. Yeah. Yeah. I was terrified. I, at this time last year, I was living in Nightmare on Elm Street. And there's no real great way to put it. Um, they, Sorry, French. Could I, what, what's the helmet called again for our audience? Because I, 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 I can't remember the name of the device. So the helmet was made of a uh, material called Velostat. Um, and toward the end, I actually covered it in a Faraday fabric. I was just trying to use just, just about everything because I ended up realizing that they were using technology mm -hmm. um, for abductions. And it, it kind of seemed supernatural and you know magic and all that, but it, I ended up having so many experiences that I, I started realizing this is technology I'm dealing with. And therefore, technology should be able to block it. This is still my thinking to this day, although I haven't found anything to block it. Um, and so, by by the by this time last year, Laura and like me, um, June. By this time last year, I was in touch with um, some researchers who recommended to me as kind of a last resort. Hey, this has been known to work in the past. It might work for you, et cetera. And I actually ended up ordering this material. I layered it with actually more layers than was even recommended on the website. And I wore this thing to bed religiously from hell high water for seven months because I was in um, a very, very dark place. I was mm -hmm. terrified to go to sleep at night. Um, there, It got to the point during the last summer where um, there's these certain uh, body vibrations that happen before abductions. I was getting those body, body vibrations during the middle of the day. Um, so because of the helmet, I don't know. I mean, at some point I was sleeping with a camera in my room. I mean, I did just about everything I could possibly think of to stop what was happening. Mm -hmm. But actually, I think what your question was, we um, did talking about it, um, kind of ramp it up and make it worse. Um, I think that does happen for a lot of people. I think people who look into this topic end up having experiences. And then we kind of go down that hitchhiker effect road and um, kind of right back to the topic of disclosure, which side is actually trying to disclose. 
Does the mm -hmm. negative side have to disclose so they can more fully enter um, our reality? You know, so I kind of ask questions like that. Mm -hmm. But um, for me, knowledge is power. And so I do look into the topic despite what's happening to me because I like to be equipped with, with the knowledge. Um, but absolutely, I um, a lot of abductees and experiencers reach out to me, and I can tell you just anecdotally, I'll ask, you know, when did you start looking into the phenomenon? And they'll say, you know, whatever date. And sure mm -hmm. enough, within weeks, it's happening, sometimes even days. Sometimes people pick up a book and start reading, and that night they're going to have some type of strange experience, even if it's just a dream. It's a, it's a sign that they're willing to get in the game. Uh, yes, it's permission. It's, it, it's permission. It, it, yeah. And I'll go even further and say um, that – a lot of the new age practices of permission as well. A lot of people are not going to like to hear me say that, but I yeah. do firmly believe that's true from my own personal experience and also speaking um, to many others in the position. Hmm. I was going to bring that up. Do you, do you think that might be a double-edged sword though? Because the, because I, I, I do think you're right. I call it the, um, like a, a, a spiritual immune system. And there's there's certain things you can do which will lower that, and I think opens opens people up to it. It's the the same way as we seem to find that people that uh, drink too much or take drugs open themselves up to these sorts of things. Um, but on the other hand of that, when you talk about like the um, that sort of semi lucid conscious state when these things are happening they very much sound like sort of a psychedelic mm -hmm. experience. And I wonder whether one of the reasons that, because it's, although there is there's, there's this sweeping sort of new age movement, there is also a pushback against people doing that sort of stuff. And I wonder whether if as much as it can open people up to things, it's almost a training for the soul trap thing. If you, because because if you've consciously dipped your toe into being there, and then you find yourself there, you're going to find it easier to navigate. It makes me wonder why the constant dumbing down of society is because mm -hmm. if you if you're not even lucid in the three D space, by the time you get to the astral space, you're going to be so pliable you can be pushed wherever they need you to go. Absolutely. And I think it is a double-edged sword. So I think so many of the things that give us awareness and lucidity are the very same things they're looking for, uh, mm -hmm. for their permission and, and their ways to access us. Um, it is a double-edged sword. How did I be even become consciously aware that this was happening, mm -hmm. um, engaging in new age practices? That's how I became aware. Um, it was absolutely a double-edged sword for me. So the very first thing I started doing is just writing down. Somebody said, write down your dreams. Well, why would I do that? Most of my dreams um, seem to be precognitive or, you know, maybe it was subconscious, whatever. I, I didn't think about my dreams. I knew that most of the time when I was dreaming, I knew I was dreaming. And a lot of times I could control the dream, et cetera. But I didn't put a lot of stock into whatever was happening during that time, um, unless it was precognitive, which I have a lot of those. Um, so the first thing I started doing was writing down my dreams and it opened up some kind of connection between the right and left brain. And I was off to the races. I'm writing down, well, what do you mean I'm flying on a spaceship? Like, this doesn't even sound normal. And I, I didn't want anyone to find my journal because it sounded so crazy what was happening. And all it took was an awareness. You know, a lot of times we wake up in the morning and we kind of shove away whatever happened to us in the night. So for me, all it took was an awareness. Um, and hooking up that connection between the right and the brain. Mm. Um, you know, conscious intent, conscious intent to remember. Yeah, but at the same time, um, did that open up permission? Could I have opened myself up to even other entities that weren't already snatching me out of my bed? You know, even low life astral entities running around uh, um, looking for that permission. And I think it is permission, but like you said, it's all a double edged sword. Um, mm -hmm. It's kind of a, it's a, it's a conundrum, actually. You know, a lot of people saying, oh, we need to raise our consciousness and all this kind of stuff. Um, be careful doing those kind of things because you might end up on the wrong side of that. What advice would you give to anyone that's going through what you're going through right now? Still, the and you have been. 
Um, talk about it. Talk about it with somebody. You know, find someone you can talk about it with, whether it's a therapist or a family member or, you know, some crazy people on the Internet. Um, I think it's very therapeutic to meet other people this is happening to you. Uh, for myself, I thought I was completely alone. Um, this was before I found out that my mom was having the same dreams and, you know, she mm. had seen Batman and she had seen a mantid in her bedroom, which actually just happened recently. But um, just finding a community of people, even though, you know, UFO Twitter has its issues, um, finding a community of people who are talking about these topics is just extremely therapeutic. Realizing you're not the only one, this is happening, and, and it's probably millions of people around the world this is happening to. And even if you're not getting snatched out of your bed, I think it's good to come to the awareness that we're probably being acted upon at all times uh, by mm -hmm. spiritual forces. And I know it sounds crazy and conspiracy theory uh, type uh, messaging, but I think it's absolutely true. And I think the more we realize we're not alone in the 3D, you know, paying our bills, sending our kids to school and waiting uh, to die, um, the better. And the more people you can reach out to and, and talk to, um, I mean, I've had, I think I mentioned this to Tony, I've had people tell me that they didn't commit suicide just from finding someone else to speak to because the things we talk about are just, you know, crazy, you're schizophrenic, you must have a mental illness, or you must have been dreaming, or you know, that could have possibly be real, or some type of psychological explanation for it. And when people realize there's other people out there just like them and a lot of people out there just like them there's nothing special about what's happening to you anyone within it's happening to a lot of us mm -hmm. um it, it it can be life-saving literally for me it was life-saving well that's awesome we have this is such a big thing i feel like we could talk to you forever but for Brevet, I would love to have you back on. We've been at it for almost an hour and a half. Sure. I know we don't want to take more of your time. We're trying to respect that of our guests because normally we'll just go for four hours. People are usually too polite to say, I got other things to do. Uh, but I would definitely like to do get you back on. Um, a live chat would be great. Uh, yeah, I think there's so much. Um, I think the, a live audience would. We have a good audience as well. Uh, yeah. to add. <laughs> Your audience is probably like my audience. <laughs> That's a mixed bag. Yeah, it, it, I, you know, I think yeah. I think this 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 there's so much. There's just so much. Um, like Dave says, and it's it's. I've been really like looking forward to this. Oh, I've so have I. Yeah. Well, I'm glad yeah. to hear that. Um, I think the longest space I ran. So you know, Twitter has spaces. And it's mm -hmm. just audio, although they added a video option. Uh, we did a 10-hour space um, wow. a few wow. months ago. And, yeah. and it's it's exactly that same reason because uh, it, it, and it's the same thing that happened with Tony. You know, the questions come out, you start going down rabbit holes, and then never really actually get back to the original question um, because there's so much information out there. And I'm not the only one with information. Uh, yeah. There are so many people out there with so much information and just getting together, even with a live audience, being able to entertain questions from all, all around. Um, I learned something new today uh, just from being in a space, chatting it up with other people. Um, mm -hmm. It's a great um, way to get information and, you know, just to pick around ideas and um, kind of collaborate. So I'm all for it. I have no problem with the live audience. I do it all the time on TV. <laughs> Well, we definitely thank you for your time and for joining us and speaking to our audience. And we would love to have you back. Now that you've seen that we aren't that weird and only two of the three of us are idiots. So, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. I'm sure, have, is your audience aware of your own uh, experiences and your own um, histories and what you guys might be hiding uh, behind the scenes? Do we have, have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we have Ollie and Lee. They're both gingers, so they both have the MC1R gene uh, floating around. And we've got definitely some interesting stories from Ollie. And I do find, you know, most people drawn to this topic, there's usually a reason. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, maybe you're not getting snatched out of your bed, but maybe you are. But, you know, there's there's other things happening, too. You know, it's not just the extremes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. We are we are 
I think the eye pines in, in the early age uh, causing chest pain. So yeah. I think it, I think this is happening to all of us to one degree or another. Yeah, yeah. I, it's, I think for some reason at whatever point in time we're in right now, uh, we're going to start being able to accept that the world is a much stranger place than it was yesterday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And with that, everyone listening, check out fringe.com at fringe.com on X Twitter. Um, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much for your time. And thanks, you guys for, thanks for inviting me on. I appreciate it. Make no sure you, if you just hang fire for two, for just for, for two minutes after the show, Make sure you like, share, subscribe, people. Good night, God bless, and mind the bugs don't bite, and check out all the links below.